the people of Kentucky elected me as just the third two consecutive term governor in our history. This wasn't my win. This was our victory. It was a victory that sends a loud, clear message. A message that candidates should run for something and not against someone. Well, last night's elections did not go too well for Republicans, and as I record this video, they are currently coping and seething, and as you watch this video, they are likely still coping and seething because this probably isn't going to be a wake-up call to them because I think they're incapable of introspection and growth, but it is very, very disappointing if you're a Republican, in particular if you want women's reproductive rights to be controlled. So we're going to talk about some of the results and we'll get to the coping and seething. But first, let's talk about Kentucky, because as you saw, Kentucky's Democratic governor, Andy Bashir defeated his Republican opponent and won re-election. Now, this is significant for a number of reasons. First and foremost, this is a deep red state that Trump won by 25.9 points in 2020. Yet, a Democrat just won re-election. Now, second of all, this is important because the GOP tried to drive down his popularity by using trans rights as a wedge issue, but it failed, which gives us some insight into how this issue fares at the ballot box. And thankfully, not great. So let me give you some additional context. Back in March, the state GOP passed a bill that banned gender affirming care for trans youth. It also regulated bathroom usage of trans people and mandated classroom censorship akin to Florida's Don't Say Gay Law. And this was likely intended to be a sort of political trap for Bashir, because if he was too afraid to veto massive legislation during an election year, well, his base could feel disillusioned and he could lose. But if he did veto it, he was basically teeing up an attack against him by Republicans who would inevitably portray him as a woke groomer or something. But he did the right thing. He vetoed this bigoted legislation, and on top of that, he defended trans youth. AP reports Governor Andy Bashir said in a written veto message that the bill allows too much government interference in personal health care issues and rips away the freedom of parents to make medical decisions for their children. In his one-page message, he warned that the bill's repercussions would include an increase in youth suicides. The governor said, my faith teaches me that all children are children of God and Senate Bill 150 will endanger the children of Kentucky. Now, predictably, Republicans quickly pounced on the governor's veto to try to portray him as out of touch with most Kentuckians on the issue. Quote, Andy Bashir thinks it's okay for children to have access to life-altering sex change surgery and drugs before they turn 18, state Republican Party spokesperson Sean Southard said in a statement. Today, he revealed how radical he truly is. Now, as journalist Aaron Reed points out, Republicans went on to spend $2 million in ads trying to portray Bashir as an extremist on LGBTQ plus issues, and they ran ads featuring Riley Gaines to warn voters that trans people are somehow destroying women's sports. But despite all of that, he won and they lost. And this indicates that demonizing trans people isn't as politically advantageous as Republicans hoped it would be. Bashir even flipped Letcher County, which Trump won by nearly 60 points. And Bashir's success has left a lot of people confused. For example, Gateway Pundit, a right-wing outlet, asks, someone please explain how Kentucky Republicans can vote in the GOP AG and Secretary of State by 17% and 22% and then vote for the Democrat for governor. How does that work? Now, if you look at the responses, they essentially all think that it's rigged because Democrats apparently forgot to rig the down ballot races when they were rigging the gubernatorial race. But in reality, it's a pretty simple formula. But I'll let Bashir explain what he did to win. Our blueprint was as simple as show up, work hard, get results and care about everybody. And, and don't get distracted by whatever the issue of the day is in Washington, D.C., now, the, when people wake up in the morning, they don't think about President Biden or President Trump. They think about, uh, do they have a, a good enough job? Uh, can they afford to take their kids or their parents to a doctor when they're sick? Do they feel safe in their community? Are the kids, their kids getting the best education? Is the road they drive on uh, to work uh, safe? Uh, does it need repairs? Th those are the things that impact everybody's daily lives. And I hope that not just Democrats, but Republicans and independents go there. You know, enough of trying to demonize groups of people, of driving a wedge between people, of, of the attacks and, and the anger. How about we all talk about how to improve people's lives, and then the electorate can decide who has the better plan or the better ideas or who they trust more to, to move them forward. 
And that's it. It's not rocket science, but other Democrats just can't seem to figure out how to win, especially in these red states. And oftentimes they lose when they shift further to the right to appeal to moderates because they end up isolating their core base. But just deliver and they will reward you by voting for you. Don't be afraid to challenge Republicans. Don't fall for their gotchas. Just deliver for your constituents and you will win. It's that simple, really. Now, on top of that, he also just ran a good campaign and he found ways to cut through the GOP's propaganda and appeal directly to voters. And this viral ad that he used in this campaign to speak to voters on the issue of abortion is one of the examples cited as to why his messaging was just so effective. I was raped by my stepfather after years of sexual abuse. I was 12. Anyone who believes there should be no exceptions for rape and incest could never understand what it's like to stand in my shoes. This is to you, Daniel Cameron. To tell a 12-year-old girl she must have the baby of her stepfather who raped her is unthinkable. I'm speaking out because women and girls need to have options. Daniel Cameron would give us none. Now, it is really hard to hear her story. It's gut-wrenching and nauseating, but people need to hear her story. They need to see the reality of post row America and how anti-abortion Republicans want to further victimize victims. So that ad is one of the moments from his campaign where he demonstrated to voters that he gets it. He understands these issues and he's willing to decenter himself and center the voices of people affected by these policies. Now, on the subject of abortion, well, the good news doesn't stop there because Ohio became the 24th state to legalize recreational marijuana. And most importantly, they voted to codify abortion rights into their state's constitution and this was a hard-fought victory because republicans did everything in their power to prevent this from happening but it still failed so if you're unfamiliar with issue one here's some additional context from our coverage of it in august now what they wanted to do was make it more difficult for citizens to amend their state's constitution by raising the vote threshold to 60 percent as opposed to a simple 50 plus one percent majority now this ballot initiative would have cemented that. And they cynically chose to hold this special election in August, even though literally earlier this year, they effectively banned August special elections, citing the cost and low turnout as part of their reasoning. But they chose to violate their own law to capitalize on low turnout in a brazen effort to push through an undemocratic amendment that would increase the odds that they would defeat this upcoming pro-choice ballot initiative. So their desperation here is palpable, but they're not wrong to think that they'd lose if they didn't rat fuck this election because as nbc news reports abortion rights have won in literally every single election since roe v wade was overturned just over a year ago kansas voters rejected an amendment that it would have eliminated the right to an abortion and on november 8th abortion rights won in all five states where it was on the ballot notably including red states like kentucky and montana and a purple state like michigan and ohio is now the seventh state to reject attempts to restrict reproductive productive rights thus far. And this doesn't even take into account the Wisconsin Supreme Court election held in April, which was largely about reproductive rights as well, where the pro-choice judge won over the far-right anti-choice judge. So two things are clear. One, after seeing that video, I need a haircut. But two, Republicans were scared shitless. They also purged voters from the rolls, which I didn't mention there. But voters saw through their bullshit. Now, fast forward to today, and they've now protected reproductive rights in the state's constitution. And it's evident that the GOP's propaganda failed and their opposition to abortion rights hurt them, even with independents and some pro-life Republicans. And that's not hyperbole. The New York Times reports Wendy Pace, a 52-year-old independent, said she didn't normally vote in off-year elections, but came out because she wanted to vote yes on issue one. I have a teenage daughter and I don't like having my rights taken away from me, she said. I fear that this is just the beginning of rights being taken away and I do fear for my daughter and what her rights would be going forward. Another person says, I'm a Christian, but I am thinking long term. It's between a person and their maker, said Carolyn Lloyd, 54. While she typically votes Republican, she said, I would hate to see women suffer because of maybe a weak moment or malfunction with birth control and have to bear that burden. Another person says, I think mother's lives are important. I think baby's lives are important. But if a little girl is raped at 10 years old, I don't think she should have to carry the baby if she is pregnant, said Delena Reed, 65, a registered Republican who considers herself pro-life for religious reasons. 
Now, these anecdotal examples demonstrate how toxic the Republican Party's opposition to abortion has become to the point where some of their own voters are turning against them and people who don't typically vote are galvanized by this issue. I mean, we heard it from that one lady who said, I don't usually vote in these, you know, off year elections, but I'm coming out to vote specifically because of abortion. Now, what's interesting to me is that even after multiple defeats on this issue, Republicans are still shocked by this. In fact, this tweet by David Brody demonstrates this perfectly, where he says, here's an absolutely disgusting exit poll statistic from last night. 24% of so-called white born-again or evangelical Christians voted for Ohio's pro-abortion constitutional amendment. It's not just the left, just horrible. <laughs> it's so good. Just inject that tweet right into my fucking veins. I love it so much. Now, other Republicans are predictably seething as well, and in response to exit polls in Ohio showing broad support for abortion rights, theocratic fascist commentator Matt Walsh responded by saying, you will hear from many on the right that this result means we should give up and simply accept the mass slaughter of infant children. I will never accept it. I don't care what the polls say. Forfeit this fight and you forfeit your soul. Nothing matters after that. Look, I for one am very glad that he he is continuing to pretend like abortion rights equals baby killing because that deceitful strategy of lying has been a demonstrable failure for Republicans. But by all means, please double down on that losing strategy, Matt. Please continue to persuade Republicans to run against abortion rights because it's going really well for you all. Oh, love it. Love it so much. Now, there's also more elections that I want to react to. Um, big elections, small elections, but here's what stood out to me. So in Virginia, Republican Governor Glenn Youngkin tried to hold control of the state house while flipping the Senate to Republicans. Now, he ran on his political accomplishments and assumed that his popularity would carry Republicans to victory. He also tried to create a new blueprint for Republicans struggling to sell abortion bans to voters, and he told voters that if Republicans took control of the state that they could look forward to a more moderate ban on abortion. Now, while he did this, down ballot Republicans mostly ran on transphobia, but Virginians told them all to eat shit because not only did Democrats hold control of the Senate, they actually flipped the House. And on top of that, they elected the state's first transgender state senator, Donica Rome. So it turns out that Glenn Youngkin overestimated his popularity and Republicans overestimated the popularity of transphobia. You love to see it. Now, in New Jersey, the entire state is now controlled by Democrats after they flipped the House of Delegates from Republicans to Democrat. And in Pennsylvania, Democrat Daniel McCaffrey defeated Republican Carolyn Carluccio in their state Supreme Court race. Now, in Mississippi, Republican Tate Reeves, a.k.a. Mitch McConnell's younger doppelganger, did end up defeating his Democratic opponent and win re-election. But it was still surprisingly close. He won by 4.6 points after Trump beat Biden here by 16.5 points. And that's big because we're talking about Mississippi. I mean, this is a deep red state. But as you see, a Democrat got really close to beating an incumbent Republican. That is a sign for Republicans that things might be going bad for them in the future, even in red states. Now, those were the biggest races, but there's still some significant local races that I do want to touch on. So late Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia's daughter lost the school board race that she was running in. And um, I'm glad that that happened. But regardless, I'm sure that her father is still smiling up at her from hell and is proud regardless. Now, a Republican running for city council in Texas was arrested for possessing CP literally hours before the election. And he ended up losing. In fact, he came in third place, which is reassuring because there was some concern that they would still vote for him regardless. But he came in third. So that's good. Now, this one is crazy to me. So Democrat Joseph DiMartino won the Derby mayor race in Connecticut after Republican DiGiovanni Jr. beat the incumbent mayor, Rich DeZekin, in the GOP primary by 10 votes. Now, Republicans presumably ousted DeZekin because he was too moderate, whereas DiGiovanni is a MAGA chud and he is literally facing charges over his participation in the January 6th insurrection. Uh, so, you know, he was he was the MAGA guy and they wanted wanted a MAGA guy. So they voted in him by 10 votes. But after the incumbent Dezekian lost, he ran a sore loser campaign, split the GOP vote, and the Democrat ended up winning. It is a beautiful tale of Republicans fucking around and finding out. Now, one more thing that I want to draw your attention to is Aaron Reed's write-up about how Moms for Liberty fascists suffered major defeats in school board races across the country. And I'm not going to share the article with you, but I'll just link to that down below and encourage you to read it because it is very encouraging. 
Biden. Now, let's get to the part that you've all been waiting for, the right-wing coat. So as you saw, Matt Walsh was very sad about voters' stance on abortion, but to push back against this notion that he is wrong and it's a losing issue, let's look at what he's saying. Quote, five years ago, lots of people on the right assured me that the trans issue was a political loser. We proved them wrong, really? Now, nearly all of those same people are assuring me that the abortion issue is a political loser. I'm sensing a pattern. My brother in Christ, you didn't prove shit. Most Republicans who took your advice and ran almost exclusively on transphobia got rocked. But don't you worry, I'm sure you're going to prove everyone right about abortion, just like you were proven right about the popularity of trans rights. This is maximum cope, but um, it, it's just it's so funny to me that he refuses to admit that he's wrong. This is cognitive dissonance in action, and it's hilarious to watch. But I do want to move on from Walsh because Rick Santorum, someone who I haven't heard about, someone who I forgot existed, is also grappling with Republicans' uh, poor performance, and he's going to make a really interesting admission here. And you put very sexy things like abortion and marijuana on the ballot, and a lot of young people come out and vote. It, 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 was, a, it was a secret sauce for disaster in Ohio. I don't know what they were thinking, yeah. but um, that's why I'm, I, I thank goodness that most of the states in this country don't allow you to put everything on the ballot because right. pure democracies <laughs> are not the way to run a country. So, so then <laughs> Incredible. Just fucking incredible. We can't let people vote on individual issues because most of the time they're going to vote against Republicans, so it's best to not let the peasants decide for themselves. I mean, in this moment, Republicans are collectively coming to the realization that most Americans just don't agree with them. They don't. Even Sean Hannity admitted this on Fox News, and the sadness that he was feeling while he made this admission was almost palpable. I'm really going to be honest about this, and I consider myself pro-life, but I understand that's not where the country is. Uh, I would say first trimester or Dobbs 15 weeks seems to be where the country is, Kaylee. I want to stay with you on this issue. And and these issues will be decided by the states. You asked you talk to the Speaker of the House. I talk to the Speaker of the House. It is not going to be an issue in in the House of Representatives. This is not going to be decided any longer in Washington, D.C. The states will decide. But the, Democrats right. are trying to scare women into thinking Republicans right. don't want abortion legal under any circumstances. Now, where on earth would Democrats get this idea from? Hmm. A better question is where on earth would Trump get this idea from? Because he also warned Republicans that abortion extremism and bans with no exceptions are going to lose them elections. So it almost feels like maybe Republicans are the ones scaring women, not Democrats, doesn't it? Of course not. It's Democrats. They're always the bad guys, no matter what. There's no objectivity, no nuance whatsoever. It's not Republicans. It's Democrats. Amazing. But I want to get to the best cope of the entire election cycle, because... Failed New York City Council candidate Brian Robinson wrote this concession speech on Twitter after losing, and it is an absolute banger. Quote, thank you to all that fight the good fight with me. NYC is irredeemable. Congratulations to Keith Powers. The city has blindly chosen its own suicide. Jews get out while you can. My family will be. To the Nazi machine that killed the great city, go fuck yourselves, soulless bastards. I think that he might be a little bit mad that he lost the election. So, in conclusion, these results are absolutely fantastic. It indicates that despite Joe Biden's dismal poll numbers, voters are still motivated to vote based on issues, which is a good sign and puts me a little bit more at ease after seeing the New York Times poll published on Sunday, which showed that Biden was losing in almost all key swing states. So, in these dark times, uh, I'm really happy to bring you at least some positive news. Things might be bad, but Americans are seemingly waking up and rejecting right-wing propaganda when it comes to abortion and trans rights. And if the fear-mongering around these issues isn't persuading voters, then what else do Republicans have? You know, they're not running on economic issues because giving tax breaks, breaks to the wealthy isn't going to galvanize people. They're not running on increasing the social safety net or actually delivering for voters. So what do they have? And the answer is fuck all, which is why they're losing. I'm going to come. Uh, uh, do not come. 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 Welcome to the Come Zone. Uh, uh, uh.